The seatbelt was invented in 1885. It wasn't until 1968 that it was legally mandated for all motor vehicles to have seatbelts. Since then, seatbelts have played a crucial role in reducing traffic-related fatalities. Seatbelts work by counteracting a passenger's inertia during rapid deceleration, restraining their forward motion. When the passenger is restrained, their kinetic energy is distributed across their chest, shoulders, and pelvis. This inflicts tremendous compression on the tissue and organs at moderate to high rates of speed. One area of the body this compression does significant damage to is the abdomen. Unlike the chest, which is protected by the ribs and cartilage, the abdomen lacks a rigid barrier, leaving numerous internal organs exposed. Surgical procedures and autopsies have shown that when seatbelts compress the abdomen, internal organs are bruised, sheared, or even ruptured. In some cases, at the moment of impact, a seatbelt can exert nearly 5,000 pounds of force on the body. Although the duration is only for half a second, the pressure is enough to perforate the intestines and rupture solid organs. If you're interested in the physics of how a seatbelt can exert 5,000 pounds of force, I've included the calculations in the description. I would also like to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, Factor. Eating well on a busy schedule can be tough, especially during the holidays. Between work, buying gifts, preparing the house for guests, and grocery shopping, making sure a meal is nutritious is the last thing I'm thinking about. This is where Factor comes in. Each meal is chef-crafted and dietitian approved They have a variety of options to choose from, like vegan, calorie smart, and protein plus, to meet your nutritional needs. I chose the Protein Plus option because I do a lot of weightlifting. Protein Plus has 30 to 45 grams of protein per meal and tastes delicious. I've been able to keep my protein intake consistent while saving time not having to cook dinner. There's no prep, no cooking, and barely any cleanup. Making dinner quick and hassle-free. Simply heat it up and eat. With over 35 fresh, never frozen options to choose from, you're sure to find something you'll enjoy. And if eating better is your New Year's resolution, Factor makes it easy to set up a meal plan and stay on track to achieving your goal. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code 50DARKSCIENCE to get 50% off plus free shipping on your first Factor box. That's code 50DARKSCIENCE at factor75.com to get 50% off plus free shipping on your first box. Thanks to Factor for sponsoring this video. After a collision, a distinct bruising pattern often appears on the body, called an abdominal ecchymosis. It's better known as the seatbelt sign. The seatbelt sign appears as visible bruising where the harness compressed the skin with thousands of pounds of force. Its appearance increases the likelihood of internal trauma. One study found out of 3,000 passengers who developed a seatbelt sign, 42% had internal abdominal injuries. In cases of very high speeds with abrupt collisions, the abdomen can have a transverse laceration. This can also happen if the seatbelt is twisted instead of being flat across the abdomen, acting more like a garrote than a safety harness. The organs most frequently injured in abdominal seatbelt injuries are the intestines at 58%, followed by solid organs at 24%. The intestines are injured more often because they occupy 60% of the abdominal cavity. Also, the horizontal harness lays across the middle to lower abdomen where the intestines sit. Though the liver is the largest internal organ, it's injured less frequently because it sits in the upper right quadrant of the body, largely away from where the seatbelt compresses. Injuries to the intestines are usually perforations or holes produced from rapid compression of the intestinal wall. While the intestines are naturally elastic, they can still tear under enough force. A less well-known organ that's injured in the abdomen is the mesentery. The mesentery is a membrane that surrounds the intestines and holds them in place. It also provides a pathway for blood vessels to supply blood to the intestines. Due to the thin membrane of the mesentery and its location, it's often torn by compression of the horizontal harness. When surgeons determine there is an internal injury, they must get to the section of intestine that is damaged to repair it. However, with the intestines being 25 feet in length and fitting tightly in the abdominal cavity, it's too difficult for surgeons to simply open the abdomen and find the injury. In this case, doctors must perform a laparotomy. In a laparotomy, an incision is made in the abdomen, and the intestines are pulled out of the abdominal cavity. From here, the injury is found and repaired. Laparotomies are often the only way intestinal tissue can be repaired properly. 
In the medical journal, Emergency Medical International, there was a case involving a 32-year-old male who was in the backseat of a car in a head-on collision. Thankfully, he was wearing his seatbelt and presented a seatbelt sign across his lower abdomen. When he was initially checked into the hospital, he showed no signs of abdominal distress or pain. During his examination, his abdomen became rigid, enlarged, and tender to the touch. This was caused by massive internal bleeding. An emergency laparotomy was performed, revealing over 3 liters of blood accumulated in his abdominal and pelvic cavities. The terminal ileum of his small intestine had been badly perforated. After surgery, the 32-year-old recovered and was discharged a week later. In addition to the intestines, solid organs are also at risk of injury. Surprisingly, they are injured less frequently. This is because they sit in higher positions in the body, above the intestines, and away from the horizontal harness. However, when they are injured, it's often because the seatbelt is resting higher up on the abdomen. Solid organs most often injured by seatbelts are the liver, kidneys, and spleen. Unlike the stomach and intestines, which have elastic tissue, giving them the ability to stretch, these organs are not meant to stretch. As such, they are very intolerant to compressive forces. Solid organs develop visible lacerations from compression. For example, in this autopsy photo, you can see the tears in the tissue of this liver. Injuries to solid organs can be especially dangerous because some have high blood volume passing through them. For example, the liver has a large artery called the hepatic artery, and the kidneys the renal artery. Both of these blood vessels carry a large volume of blood through the liver and kidneys. This is because both organs treat the blood. The liver detoxifies blood and the kidneys filter it. If either is ruptured, it could lead to massive blood loss. Wearing a seatbelt properly isn't something many people think about. When most of us get into the car, we put on our seatbelt, turn the ignition, and think about where we're going. Most of us don't take more than a second to see if we're wearing it properly. One of the largest demographics at risk for seatbelt injuries is children under the age of 10. Children have underdeveloped abdominal muscles and are more prone to physical injuries. They also tend to reposition their seatbelts due to discomfort or may not realize that they're wearing them incorrectly. After all, they are kids. It's vital for parents to observe and instruct their children on how to wear their seatbelts. Speaking of which, what is the correct way to wear a seatbelt? Seatbelts are designed to be worn across the most secured parts of the body, across the middle of the collarbone, over the rib cage, and across the pelvis. The seatbelt is most secure and safest at the pelvic girdle. The pelvis is a thick, resilient bone that is capable of withstanding the dissipation of kinetic energy and compression from the seatbelt. Between the pelvis and the rib cage, there is no protective barrier. It's all soft tissue and organs. Placing the seat belt here results in internal injuries. Also, the pelvic cavity contains fewer organs than the abdomen. The abdominal cavity houses the liver, gallbladder, intestines, spleen, stomach, kidneys, and pancreas. Whereas the pelvic cavity only holds the bladder, the terminus of the large intestine, and the reproductive organs. Bottom line, make sure you are wearing your seatbelt the right way, because you may survive the collision, but you may not survive the effects. Thank you for watching Dark Science.